Okay, just want to show how I organized it. This is the next day. Finally got kind of unpacked a little bit. So jackets, scarves, hats over here. There's four hooks. By the door, I used my magnets that I purchased. They're identical. One's for my brother. And I just kind of put the things that, like the daily itinerary and stuff there. So over here with the hair dryer, I have hair accessories and stuff like that. And then I have my camera and like kind of things that I would normally be taking out on excursions. This is kind of where I'd want it to be. That way I know everything's right there. So a little tote and sunglasses, things like that. In here I have all my makeup, or some of it. <laughs> I have the rest down here. I have my jewelry roll under here. I don't just bring expensive jewelry, so not a big deal. And then these are other types of little things that I have in this bag. This side I have my, so that uh, cords don't get tangled up, I put my other hair stuff there. I put my bottled water that I purchased there. I do keep some things out on the counters. So on this side, sounds weird. Um, this side I have kind of my night stuff. And on this stuff I have my kind of day stuff. What I did is I just took the packing cubes out. Worked out really well. And then I put all my shoes down there. So that worked out really well. Yes. I did bring extra shoes. And then over here, I just put my iPad down there just because I like to have it close to the bed. <coughs> and then I put my iPod and, and then my electrical charger here. Again, there's a regular plug and a Euro plug. So, but I really only need this. It seemed to work out pretty well. And let's see, I'm gonna push this back and then this will slide. And I just kind of put my purse, there's nothing in my purse, everything's in the safe. And then I didn't put anything down there. All right, so that is how I organized. And so I'm gonna go grab some breakfast and be ready for port day because we have to be leaving about 7.30. All right, catch you later. Pretty good breakfast. Just some standard eggs, toast, sausage, bacon, ham, and some watermelon. When we got into Florence, we walked about a mile to a mile and a half to where the Statue of David is housed in the Galleria dell'Accademia. Federico, our tour guide, was phenomenal. He has such a love and passion for his city, and he talked about the history and are the, all the architectural detail of the buildings and how his city has changed over time. Of course, the city is so old that the history was intense. When we got to the Galleria de Academia, we did go through security, so please remember that. And in the city and inside the museums, there are a lot of nude statues. So as you book excursion, excursions, please think of that if that is a concern of yours. One of my favorite pieces was this particular one, and unfortunately, I can't remember the name. I probably should have looked it up before filming or talking through this video, but this was one of my favorites. There are some 
a little bit of lighting inside the Galleria, but a lot of it is all natural light that comes down on a lot of the pieces to preserve them. Michelangelo's bust is in here, and I'm sure there's probably others in other museums that one and here's another piece as we got into where the statue of David is um, of course I'm not showing a lot of the pieces inside just because I wanted to focus on this particular piece now the statue of David this is a based on the story of David and Goliath and while David in the Bible says he is a, a small boy against this big gigantic gigantic Goliath this depiction is shown of more of a man. So very interesting how Michelangelo saw David as a very strong hero. The statue is 17 feet tall and is of one solid piece of marble. Now the work of David began in 1464 with a sculptor named Agostino de Duccio. I hope I'm saying that right. His work stopped rather abruptly, but around 10 years later, Antonio Rosalino started on this, and he also stopped abruptly. Now, it is told by Federico, our tour guide, that the stone of marble was so difficult to work with that they just felt they couldn't complete the work. So that piece of marble sat untouched for 26 years until Michelangelo was commissioned to complete the work in 1501. Now he finished about two years later in 1504. This statue of David sat outside in the elements in the piazza in Florence until 1873, where it was moved to the Galleria dell'Accademia. This particular area is of all natural light. There is no artificial light, and that is, again, to preserve this statue. Now, the foot was damaged in 1991 by a gentleman who was hammering inside the Galleria. And so now, let's just look at the power of of the Statue of David. Part two, we'll be able to see the original location where David stood, as well as some other art pieces and more of the city of Florence.